Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hi, Melanie Johnson here with another great podcast. I have my partner in crime, so to speak, Jen Foster. How you doing, Jen? Hey, guys. How's it going? Great. Well, we have a wonderful podcast for you today. We have the Martha Stewart of Utah with us. So she has had a hugely successful catering, um, wedding catering, corporate catering business. She's all over social media. Her business has been around, I think, for over 20 years. Uh, Um, 34 to be exact. Oh my gosh, over 30 years. Holy cow. So she's got a wealth of information. She's a blazing women on, woman entrepreneur. So we're going to learn a bunch of stuff from her today. And first, we want to remind you, please subscribe to our podcast. We know we have, when you subscribe, the difference is you're going to get who's on our show. You're going to get updated so you won't miss any of the great episodes that we have versus not knowing what's going on. So please subscribe so you can be updated in the know of who's coming on our show. I want to subscribe. Yes. yes. (laughs) Mary's going to subscribe for us. And then make sure you share it with other people. We'd love you to share it and leave us comments and hear from you. And then also, if you're looking to write your story and uh, help a book help your business to grow and get leads and get new customers and use it as a lead generating tool, we would love to help you with that. Um, We have a, a book here called Life Legacy Challenge, which I wrote off from my TED Talk. And there's some great information in here on how to start your book, how to publish your book. And again, we would love to do that for you. We've had over 50 number one best-selling authors and we have over 1400 titles on Amazon. Well, let's get started with Mary. She is just, the, like I said, an amazing entrepreneurial woman. Started this company over 30 years ago. Welcome, Mary. Thank you so much. Mary Craft Homer, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. It's just a d- delight to be here and share this kind of a morning with two other entrepreneurial women. Thank you. Well, tell us, Mary, a little bit about yourself, a little bit of your background and kind of how you came to this um, business of culinary, culinary arts. Well, I certainly did not start off to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, like so many women in my generation, and thought that that was what was ahead of me. That's what my mother did. That's what I was going to do. But as I tell so many women now and so many female students who are in school, you do not know what your path is going to be. You might think it's going to be one thing and a whole other thing is sent your direction. And so when I realized that I was going to be the head breadwinner in my family and that my husband, because of some emotional difficulties, was not able to hold down a job. I should say my husband at that time, because my my current husband hates it whenever people come and say, oh, I understand you've had some emotional problems. (laughs) My husband at that time. Your starter uh, husband. (laughs) <laughs> yes, my former husband, uh, that I was going to need to be that chief bread earner. And so uh, that meant I could go back to social work, but that's an eight to five job, bring the ch- children in daycare. Um, I thought, well, what could I do at home? What could I do? Okay, so I started teach voice lessons, did piano lessons, um, taught um, uh, everything I could imagine, sold Avon door to door. And uh, none of that was really generating the kind of income that I wanted. So I had to spend some time thinking, what is it that I could do, that I could generate money? What is my passion? What do I love to do? What could I do that would be work, but didn't feel like work? And the thing that I've always loved to do was cook. And I've always loved to entertain. Well, you put those two things together and I just thought, maybe I can cater. I mean, who knows? I had never worked in the food industry, never worked in the restaurant industry, um, but I just had that passion to cook and to entertain. And so I began very small uh, with a commitment to not borrow money. I had $150 and and I began. Uh, In those tiny, humble beginnings, we are now the largest catering company in the state of Utah. 34 years later, we've won 16 best of state, Uh, five international uh, catering awards. One was the best international caterer of the year. We have come so far in that field, and there are some skill sets 
that I just had to learn through, I didn't go to school in this, so I had to learn through that other school, the School of Hard Knocks. Yes. <laughs> and it's a tough school, but if you graduate, you can really fly. <laughs> yes, well, I love everything you just said about the questions you asked yourself. So I think everyone who's starting a new business or wanting to do something new, they have to ask those questions. It's like, what are you passionate about? And what, what kind of things do you like to do or have fun doing? And why, you know, why do I want to do those things? So I love all those questions you said. Those are great. Well, not everyone is cut out to be an entrepreneur. Right. Some people, they should work a regular eight to five job. They should work for someone else. They want their nights free, their weekends free. Uh, and if that's who you are, don't plan on being an entrepreneur. <laughs> because you get really no time off. You live and breathe whatever is in front of you at that moment. Mm -hmm. And you are the bottom line responsible. Nobody's coming in and providing your health insurance for you and your 401k unless you do it. And you have to be willing and motivated to work that hard, to be full of that many new ideas, to recreate yourself all the time. If you can imagine in 34 years, how many times I've had to reinvent culinary crafts in order to stay fresh, cutting edge, new, we're kind of known as setting the trends. Well, that doesn't just come easy when you're my age. <laughs> I have to be out there looking. Uh, of course, I don't mind traveling and the R&D needed to do, it, to do it. But with that said, it's, it's a constant journey. Yeah. There's no place of rest. The entrepreneur either loves that or they hate it and they should not do it. What would you say, like you said, you've had to reinvent yourselves over and over again. And I think a lot of businesses, they maybe find what they think is working and they stay with it. And then they become dinosaurs without knowing they're not keeping up with what's going on. What are some of the key things besides keeping up with the trends that you've had to go through? Because business isn't always fun and glory. Things go upside down. A vendor doesn't pay you, puts you in financial crisis. Things happen. What has sustained you over these 30 years in your business that you can give advice to people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's, there's the creative side that has sustained me, and then there's the actual financial business side. And um, this side, my father was a great businessman, so I kind of came by that um, through my father, and I had a sense of wanting to be of service to people, um, to be honest, full of integrity. Those kind of things are the same principles back then, are the same principles now. And so those kind of things are with you always. They don't change. However, how I did them definitely changed. In the beginning, my idea of accounting was taking a piece of paper, writing everything down by hand, um, adding it up on a you know key machine, and then keeping track of it. And uh, my way of doing an, a take order was to do it all by hand. And you know, I can remember back when I would tell people, um, "I'm going to send you your proposal. It'll come in the mail in about a week." <laughs> You know, I mean, who, you wouldn't even, you just laugh at that. Who would do that now? Right. So I've had to stay on top of that. And, you know, the way I was doing things worked great for the first million dollars in business. But then does that work when you get to three, when you get to five, when you get to eight? I had to continually reinvent, allow myself to trust people, hire an accountant, hire an accounting firm, uh, learn about the computer, learn about the fax machine. That was a whole new adventure. <laughs> Somebody said, you know, can you fax this to me? I'd run across the street and use the business across the street. And when they'd say, can you email it? The first time I said, I think I can do that when my children get home from school. <laughs> you know? yeah. you know, that's kind of craziness. So I've changed business-wise a lot in becoming just really, you have to grow with your company and what your company's needs are. Become much more savvy in that aspect. Mm -hmm. In the creative aspect, that never ends for me. And I love that piece. Um, I read 12 food magazines a year. I read do I, dozens of blogs. I travel. I do all those things. And I look for those things which are going to keep us front and edgy. And I know that people are watching us, what are culinary crafts doing? And that's what we want to do to be cutting edge. And so I'm never worried about my competition copying what I'm doing. Because if you worry about that, that means that you believe there's an end to creativity. And I don't. They can copy and I'm just going to invent something else. Yeah, I love that. And, that, you know, we were checking out your social media and your Pinterest and all the different things. And it's fun to see all of the things you've created and all the fun things that, you know, I would have never thought of, um, you know, just like that you had some chips on a skewer that you made and just some really cool stuff. 
and and to be able to um, to have the trend and be the trendsetter for that is awesome. So I love that you talked about the research because I think that is really important. You know, you're 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 staying on top of it by by keeping active. Right. Of the things that you are doing, like Jen was bringing up about the social media and the Pinterest and the YouTube, um, what are you finding for your business? Um, do you feel like you have to be everywhere or are there certain things that you've honed down and you think this mm -hmm. is working better for us than other in, things? In terms of the social media? Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah. Your marketing and social media. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, definitely we've gone from the days of yellow page ads. Um, and I used to bemoan that they weren't in color. <laughs> um, then, you know, those left and, and now we're kind of in the middle of looking at print. Really, how much print are we going to do from this point? We have kind of whittled that down, but we're still in bride magazines because they like the tactile, mm -hmm. but uh, much less of that and it, so much electronic. Um, so we started doing uh, videos and launching our own YouTube channel because we know how much people love to push the little arrow button and watch a video. Um, and social media is huge. And so we wanna make sure we have a presence on social media. But when we actually take a look at our client base, because we're kind of at that upper echelon, you know, 5% of people who are looking for catering. That's not where they're shopping for catering. That's where the millennials are shopping, but they're not yet buying our level of catering unless their boss tells them, go find me a caterer. So we want to make sure we're appealed to them. We're up, we're hip, we're doing all these great things. We have videos, we're, we're like everything. But where does the person look who is shopping that's if they're in that upper 10%, right. they are asking their friends, they are talking to a venue about a referral. They usually are only doing this one-on-one -on -one basis of, of spending that kind of money. When you're gonna spend that kind of money, you don't do it off of what something you saw on a social media post. Right. So we know the importance of our networking, of hosting events for our clients. Uh, sending things to people who have done events with us, keeping our venues happy, um, keep, keeping people who are also in the event industry in love with us. And we're just getting ready to um, do a big preview party for 2018 of our new food, new presentation. Um, all those people are invited. So for us, you have to have a mix of making sure you have enough marketing dollars to um, target those people who are actually buying catering and enough marketing dollars to stay current on social media. Oh my gosh, it's taking so much marketing dollars now. <laughs> <laughs> very, very true. Well, and, and tell us a little bit about, um, you know, I mean, tell us more about your services. So I know you, you mentioned wedding catering and corporate catering. What are some of the other things that you guys do? Well, I would say catering is probably divided really in three categories, um, wedding, and you can't be in Utah without doing weddings. You just can't. That's how I started. I still do weddings, but it's now only about 25% of my company. Then there's corporate catering, which comprises about 65% of my catering. And then there's social. These would be things like a 50th birthday party, a bat mitzvah, a bar mitzvah. You know, those kinds of things uh, would encompass that last 10%. So it's nice to be divided among different areas because different parts of our economy affect different things. For example, during the recession in 2008, I lost 60% of my bookings. Just like that. I got so I was afraid to pick up the phone because everyone wanted to cancel. It was, if you could recall in the fall, they wanted to cancel all their holiday parties, their holiday gifts, their baskets, blah, 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 blah. please. But if your daughter was your only daughter and she was getting married, the recession did not stop you. So having that piece of social and wedding catering certainly sustained us. We didn't lose any of those bookings yeah. and then waited for the social or the corporate to come back. And it has come back in Utah with a vengeance. That's the biggest chunk that has grown. You know, it reminds me of uh, Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank. You know, the weddings, people always get married, they always have babies, and they always die. So if you're in those, some part of that business, Equation, yeah. it's going to sustain. It might go down some, but it's still going to sustain. And that's part of our social catering is we actually do cater a lot of what they call now, they don't call them funerals, they call them life celebrations. 
Right. And I love that. Um, and um, but you know, you have to be careful there. And I want to be careful when I cater that particular piece. It's so easy to gouge people because they're like, whatever, just sign on the bottom line. And right. so you really want to make sure you're you're fair to them. This is a hard time for them. I don't want them to come back in a month and think and say, my gosh, what did I spend for that? <laughs> and then bad mouth me about town. I want them to know that I I was there for them. I created a wonderful event for them that they didn't have to worry about this little detail and that, that I continue as a, as a good word on their lips. Right, right. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming today. It's been wonderful having you. Thank Is you. There the last piece of advice being a businesswoman, um, which is different than being a businessman, um, that you have found that has worked for you as a businesswoman? Well, things like having a core value, having things like overcoming fear. Um, each one of us deal with that, and women in business particularly. I started a podcast, uh, which deals not with food, but with, um, I call it crafting a meaningful life. And it's those core values, um, the universal principles that are good for men and women that my podcast is about. about. And you can find that at Crafting a Meaningful Life or at uh, Mary Crafts Homer podcast. So that's great. Martha Stewart of Utah. I love <laughs> <laughs> Martha Stewart doesn't just cook. <laughs> That's great. Well, we'll put those links up at the bottom. And um, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening, then you can go to those links. Do you want to say them one more time, Mary? Uh, Crafting a Meaningful Life. That's my podcast with Mary Crafts Homer. Or the company, culinarycrafts.com. Follow us on every piece of social media you can find. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Mary, for coming. It was very inspirational, motivational, and educational all at the same time. I Thank think you. we learned a lot from you. So we want to remind you again, subscribe to our podcast so you can be up to date on everybody's coming on our show. We have some fabulous women coming on. We've been doing a women's CEO series. And if you have a book that you would like to write to promote your business, we feel that every business has a book and we have everything you need to write it. So make sure that you look us up at EliteOnlinePublishing.com and we would love to help you. And we'll see you next time right here on the podcast at Elite Expert Insider. Bye. Bye-bye now. If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business. If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.